Most manufacturers now have at least one Eco Warrior model on sale, and this is Skoda's offering. It's called the Fabia Greenline 2. With many details shared with the room set, as you'd expect, this is not the best looking car on the market. But aesthetics are not what a Fabia Greenline is all about. No, the aim of the game here is economy. It's certainly not what you'd call ugly, but there is something about the high roof and those rounded sides that make it look a little clumsy. The rather beaky looking front end is exaggerated somewhat by oversized headlamps, but smart alloys help to avoid the fat body skinny wheels look that would otherwise completely blow your cool. Although cool is something that's very hard to find once you start driving, and I was soon as confused as a homeless hermit under house arrest. Something very strange happened this morning while I was talking to my camera crew. It would appear that somebody has been in under the bonnet and stolen an entire cylinder. I'm only left with three. Can't have come like that, can it? Oh, it's meant to be like that. Ah, that would explain the uh, lethargic start. Now, most super eco-friendly cars these days come equipped with a six-speed gearbox. However, Skoda have decided not to go to the expense of a whole extra gear. No, instead, they've decided that they're going to stick with the five-speed box, but increase the ratios between the gears. There is a downside to this. With such a small engine, pulling away can be a real challenge. And pulling into heavy traffic can be downright terrifying. You start to move, the engine revs drop. So you find that you spend an awful lot of your life dipping the clutch, raising the revs, and then re-popping the clutch to get the car to move. You have to totally change your driving style with this vehicle. is powered by Volkswagen's latest blue motion technology engine. It's exactly the same engine, in fact, that you will find in the blue motion Polo. Unfortunately, it is anything but refined. Come on. Getting that. That can't be good for the economy. But it's not all bad news by any means, and the Green Line 2 has some very strong plus points. The Fabia is pretty big by class standards, but it's still compact enough to win in the city. The ride's pretty comfortable, but it does suffer from a fair bit of body lean on tight corners. A little wind noise does build up around these steep front pillars at higher speeds, but the suspension noise is rarely noticeable. A shame the same can't be said for that um, turbo diesel engine, which is just, well, uber gruff. Once you're up to a constant speed, however, noise is far less of an issue. And having pointed out all the car's downsides, I have to say that it is a very practical family vehicle with an awful lot to offer. In practical terms, the Fabia Estate has plenty of space to offer. There's a good deal of head and leg room in any seat, and the boot is very well shaped to maximise loading space. Quite surprisingly, however, Skoda haven't been exactly over-generous with the standard equipment. And as far as I can tell, the base model doesn't even get a lid on the glove box. In fact, you have to pay extra for almost every luxury. Remote control central locking is, for example, an option worth £150, which feels a little odd in the 21st century. So 
So the Green Line 2 may have some obvious faults, but there's a very strong argument for owning one. It's not built for speed, and it's not a luxury product, rather a brilliantly designed tool to do a very important job. This thing is built to save you money. This car's biggest weakness is also its greatest strength. That 1.2-litre TDI engine may sound like a clapped-out taxi, but it's capable of returning fuel consumption of over 90 miles per gallon on a run. This no-frills approach certainly won't be for everyone, but there's currently massive demand for simple, spacious, cheap-to-run family transport. And Skoda has anticipated this. The Green Line 2 is therefore very strategically placed. This car is clearly priced to rival vehicles such as the Peugeot 207 or the Renault Clio estates. However, the Fabia is likely to enjoy higher resale values than many of its nearest rivals. It is therefore a car that is very unlikely to, um, turn your head. It is, however, designed for people who buy with their heads rather than their hearts. And when it comes to value for money and fuel economy, it is going to be very, very hard to beat.